Um, as we know, that science is categorized by its technicality. So we often see that science is filled with uh, technical discourse and knowledge. So, but within much te technical discourse in science, one of the most notable feature is its high use of formalisms. Let me show you, for example, this is an advanced uh, mathematic textbook. You can see that this uh, text page is uh, filled with uh, this uh, mathematical symbols and uh, mathematical equations. And also in physics, you can see that everywhere equations. And also in chemistry, you can see this uh, equations, different kinds of equations used uh, in chemistry. And so, we can see that formalisms are everywhere in science text. This gives rise to a question, why science needs uh, to use formalisms? So today, um, I'll focus on chemistry and try to get some insight from chemical formalisms. The reason for choosing chemical chemistry as an object of study is that it uses a variety of the formalisms. Let me show you, for example, this uh, uh, molecule formulas, sorry. Uh, I can't see my slides uh, on the um, uh, molecule formulas. And uh, you can see that this is molecule formulas and also ionic formulas, this bits, and also various uh, structural formulas. You can see that this is full of uh, structural formulas, but there are different types of structural formulas. I'll introduce them uh, later. And also various chemical equations, you can see that this different kinds of equations here. So as, sh as shown in an example text, chemical formalisms are an essential part of chemistry. We can say that they are important knowledge builders of chemistry. Students need to read them and understand them to be successful in chemistry. Uh, but apart from reading, students also need to be able to write them to show they have the knowledge. For example, this is a worksheet of a year eight student in New South Wales and students are required to write these uh, chemical formulas to show that they have the knowledge to, you know, to represent this uh, chemical substance. And also they need to you know, be able to write them in their student notebooks, for example, structural formulas to show they have the knowledge. And also in year 11 student, they need to write uh, the chemical equations to show their understanding of uh, chemical reactions. So having shown that chemical formalisms are important parts of uh, both high stake reading and writing, an important issue that we need to look at is the variety of uh, chemical formalisms. So chemistry mainly uses uh, two types of formalisms, but each type have many variations. The one of the major types is, uh, um, is chemical formulas. So it is a type of representation to describe aspects of a chemical substance. So there are different subtypes. One is molecule formulas. Um, molecule formulas is a term from chemistry. So they describe composition of molecules, specifying numbers and uh, types of atoms that make up a molecule. For example, this is a water molecule. It describes that this water molecule is composed of two hydrogen, hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. And ionic formulas is another type of uh, uh, chemical formulas. So they describe composition of ions, specifying numbers and types of atoms that make up uh, ion and also the electric charge that the atoms show. So for example, this is a sodium cation. This is a chlorine anion. You can see that it shows the composition of atom and the, the charge that uh, this ion shows. And also structural formulas. Structural formulas is a very important uh, formula in, in organic chemistry. Uh, they mainly used to uh, provide the structural information of a chemical substance. So they can have many variations. For example, you can see there's a lot of variations. Uh, these four different types of uh, structural formulas represent the same chemical substance of methan. Each emphasizing a specific aspect of uh, that chemical substance. So the other type of, uh, of formulas used in chemistry is a chemical equation. They are used to describe chemical reactions. There are also, there are also several subtypes. 
molecule equations. So molecule equations is the type of chemical equations in which formulas of the compounds are written as though all species existed as molecules or whole units. So for example, in this equation, you can see that all these uh, uh, formulas represent the molecule, molecules. And in this one, these are molecules, although this is not a molecule, it's a ionic compound, but it's written as a whole unit in a molecule equations. And the third, this one is a further variation of uh, molecule equations. It's a reversible uh, equation. It represents uh, equilibrium uh, reactions. And ionic, ionic equations, uh, ionic equations are a type of equation in which dissolved ionic compounds are shown as free ions. You can see that this dissolved ionic compound are shown as ions here. Same here. And also there are some other equations that in chemistry that are very interesting, but I find chemists haven't simply haven't to provide a name for them. And in this kind of equation, all these species are represented by structure formulas. And a very particular function of this uh, 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 equation is that you can, through this equation, you can see which bits undergoes the reaction. So this is very important information provided by this type of uh, equations. So we can see that there are so many different uh, uh, chemical formulas, and, and uh, some scholars do notice the variety of uh, formulas used in chemistry. For example, from Malin, 1986, um, the formulas built in from these symbols in order to represent more and more complex materials of chemistry, particularly of organic chemistry, constant in some several semiology subsystems. And also from table 2009, 2009, even within this one class of representation, there's a considerable variety of forms. So the students are expected to progress through increasingly complex types of equation that reflect subtle variation in format and meaning. So some scholars do notice the variety of the formalisms, but the question is, it seems that uh, why chemistry needs such diverse formalisms that role they play in building chemistry knowledge are relatively underexplored. So Due to this, so today I mainly look at the why does chemistry need such diverse formalisms and what are the roles in building chemistry knowledge. So a fruitful, a fruitful avenue to come at this issue is a semantics that I mentioned the LCT because it helps reveal the development of formalisms, complexity, and the context dependency when building knowledge. So as we know that uh, semantics uh, uh, includes two uh, crucial uh, concepts, semantic gravity and semantic density. So this is a little bit introduction about uh, semantic gravity. Uh, I believe you have already know very familiarly uh, what it means, but um, I would like to still intro uh, introduce them. So semantic gravity refers to the degree of context dependence of meaning. It can be stronger and it can be weaker um, if it is uh, along a continuum strength. It, if, it, if it is a stronger, it means it is more content, context dependent. If it is weaker, it means it's less context dependent. So we can, strength, uh, semantic, uh, we can strengthen semantic gravity, which means you can move from the uh, less uh, context dependent to uh, more context dependent, for example, moving from abstract and generalized ideas toward concrete and dynamic cases. And we can also weaken its main gravity, moving from concrete particulars of specific cases towards generalization of abstractions. So this is a, a semantic gravity. And semantic density refers to the degree of uh, complexity of meaning. So the same, it can be stronger and it can be weaker. If it is weaker, it means uh, uh, less meaning are condensed. If it is stronger, it means uh, more meaning are condensed there. So saying we can strengthen semantic density, uh, moving from particular or symbols that denote a small number of meanings towards one that implicate a great range, and we can from moving from highly condensed practice or symbol to one that involves fewer meaning. And another concept that I'm going to use in my study is a translation device. A translation device can be seen as a translator between the LCD concepts and data. 
So Maiten distinguished two types of uh, translation device, specific general uh, translation device and generic translation device. And the primary distinction between them is that in specific translation device, it focuses on a specific problem situation of the study, whereas uh, generic translation device focuses on, you know, embrace all empirical form, uh, forms of uh, phenomena. And today, in my study, um, my I think my translate uh, translated device is a specific translated device because uh, I'm focusing on chemical formisms used in second school chemistry textbooks. So, uh, a little bit about data. I used the secondary school chemistry in New South Wales, Australia. So, Oxford in science science Australia from year seven to year. 10, which are divided into stage four and stage five separately. And Pearson Chemistry in Wales, year 11 and year 12. This is a stage six. So, um, as we know that, uh, just like I showed you the different kinds of uh, chemical formisms, it is clear that different kinds of chemical formisms, formisms have uh, different levels of uh, complexity. Uh, for example, this is a, uh, uh, Molecule formulas, it shows uh, the meaning of uh, the composition. For example, this is composed of 200 atoms and the one oxygen atom. And for this structure formula, it not only shows the composition of the atoms uh, and also covalent bounds and also arrangement of these atoms. So these different formulas have different levels of complexity. So a problem is that if we want to reveal the role, uh, to see the role these formisms play in building chemistry knowledge, we need to grasp their complexity. So we need to translate it between the semantic density and the data. So this is a primary work that I'm doing and I'll show you how I did this. So this is a tentative translation device for uh, trying to grasp the complexity of chemical formisms is a tentative one and a very drafty and um, but I still want to yeah so your comments are welcome uh, uh, and I would, love, I would love to hear there hear them so this is a big one uh, as you can see there's a big table and uh, there are is a very delicate uh, one there are four levels of uh, uh, delicacy and one distinguished feature of this translating device is that it is very fine-grained. There are 13 uh, different strengths of uh, ESD. So this is a very distinct feature of uh, the uh, chemical formisms, very fine-grained, uh, distinguished in semantic density. And let me show you, let me first show you, uh, let me show you the translation device. Uh, so the first level of translating device is uh, we can distinguish between formula and equation. So formula refers to formulas that describe entities, that is a chemical substance. For example, this is a water molecule, uh, is an entity there, yeah, is a chemical substance. But in an equation, uh, whereas equation refers to formulas that describe events, that is, reactions between or among chemical substance. For example, this is a, a hydrogen uh, gas and oxygen gas we get to form uh, in water, uh, liquid water. So the reason why equation has stronger uh, semantic density than formula is primarily reasons that it is part of uh, this uh, kind of like entity part of the event. So it has added more meaning there. So equation is placed above a uh, formula in the uh, SD strength. So I would like to focus on formula first, this bottom half, and you can see uh, how it goes. Uh, formula, in the second level of formula, we can distinguish between symbolic and the structure. For a symbolic, I refer to formulas that show composition of chemical substance, Again, molecular formulas, you can show the composition of atoms that make up, that makes, uh, make up of a water molecule. And the structural, I use structural, structural is a name that, uh, that I use to refer formulas that uh, show composition of chemical substance. And also, 
their structural information. You can see that they have had they show the compositions, the atoms, the covalent bonds, and also how these atoms are arranged in a structure formula. That is the structure of information. So you can see that it has much more meaning than the symbolic one. So it's placed above the symbolic. And within symbolic, we can distinguish between molecular and ionic. So this is a third level of formula. We can distinguish between molecule and ionic. So within so molecule R re refers to formula that show composition of the chemical substances. Yeah, the compositions, one nitrogen atom and three hydrogen atoms. And ionic for that show composition of substance and the electro electric charges it shows, for example, it, it has an additional meaning of the charge here. So the addition of this meaning gives a uh, you know, like a stronger semantic density there. And still, please bear with me uh, with the uh, go through this uh, trusted device. Uh, you may feel boring, but I'll finish it very quickly. Structural can be further distinguished, uh, you know, with uh, in planar and sterile. So, what is planar? Planar. I use planar to refer formulas that show relative location of atoms to each other in conventionalized structure formula. The structural arrangement of atoms tends to be more of a topological. So you can see that it shows the relative location to each other in a conventional structure formula. So it more kind of like logical. It shows okay, this is uh, like on the left and on on the top, but it doesn't show which specific locations they are in the three dimensional. So this is the work done by the sterile. I use sterile to refer to form is that shell spatial arrangement atoms with roughly more precise reflection of the molecule's actual structure. You can see that this is an example that the structural arrangement tends to be more of topographical. You can see that there's different means of representation to show the specific location of these uh, atoms in a three dimension and also use this uh, bounds to, you know, to show Bounds to show the geometry of this uh, of, of this math and molecule. So you see, has much more meaning here. So I place sterile above the uh, planar on the SD stress. So this is uh, the translat translation device of uh, of the bottom half. You may ask, uh, so what? Why it is useful to have all this uh, sorting out the all this uh, different stress? Of semantically the chemical formisms, I, I would like to argue that it can help see how chemical formisms build complexity as schooling progress. Let me show you the payoff of uh, this translation device. Building complexity, and I would like to focus on the uh, on certain topics so that you can see the development of the complexity within formisms across uh, schooling levels. In year eight. This is a text from the A textbook. Uh, for example, specific focus on this part. Let's have a read. Okay, the oxygen has uh, the chemical symbol O. Oxygen can form the atomic or triatomic uh, gases, the diatomic form, which has the chemical formula O2, while ozone has the chemical formula O3. The small two and the three actually O symbol tell you how many atoms are involved in each molecule. So you can see that the language here, the text language here, explains the composition of the oxygen and the oxygen gases. So the composition, how many atoms are are are, are in? What does this uh, formula mean? So the formula is condensed meaning from the language here. We can represent this from language through a condensation to this O2 and O3. So using the translation device, we can label it as D1+. Plus. So this is in year eight. We can see there how the knowledge is being built in that, condensing meaning from the language to the formulas. And let's see year 11, the same topic, oxygen and ozone gases. Here you can see that 
O2 and O3 are used here in year 11 directly. There's no explanation about the composition anymore. But you can see the language here. Language is each oxygen atom in this arrangement is bound to one oxygen atom. For O3 consists of central oxygen atom bound to other oxygen atoms. Here, language does not describe their composition anymore, like in year eight. But it as more it describes the general arrangement of this atom in the two molecules. So we can see that the structural formula here so shows specific revocation of atoms of types of covalent bonds. So we can see that from this O2 and O3, they're used direct here, and then meaning from the language is being condensed within this structure formula, arranging atoms. So SD using the translation device can maybe SD uh, plus three. So we can see the complexity is gradually being built across the schooling levels. So it's a little bit clear here. And from year eight to year 11, you can use this uh, forms to represent how the complexity is being built through the schooling levels. This is kind of like showing you how the knowledge is being built through these formisms. From O2 and O3, it first condenses uh, meaning from the language, and then in year 11, it further condenses meaning from the language, and then all the meanings are being condensed in this structural formulas. So that's how we can see that the knowledge is being built there. And some more uh, examples, uh, building the complexity of math in year 10. You can see that from this text. Uh, please bear with me and uh, have a short read. A molecule of the compound of methane, for example, consists of one carbon and four hydrogen atoms, and is therefore represented by the chemical formula CH4. So lack of a subscript on the C indicates one atom C per methane molecule. And same, you see the language in the text here explains the composition of this CH4. What does this CH4 mean? And all this meaning are condensed in this CH4 from the language. So the same from language condensation and formulas, ST1 plus using our translation device. And from in year 12, you can see that in year 12, the same method, the CH4 is used here directly, but let's have a read. The language further describes what it means further described contains one carbon atom with four single covalent bonds to four hydrogen atoms. So one kind of one carbon, uh, carbon atoms with four covalent single covalent bonds comes to uh, four hydrogen atoms. So you can see that the language meaning here it shows uh, the S more meaning single covalent bonds and arrangement of uh, the atoms here. Atoms here you can see that. So through this text, you can see, we can see that from SD1 being condensed to SD plus three. So we can see the complexity is being built. And this is within one same page. This is uh, a moment ago, we discussed about uh, how the knowledge is being, complexity being built here. And then gradually to here, and I zoom out and zoom in with a focus on this. So within the text, it, is, it shows, what does it show? Within this text, it shows about the geometry. For example, the bounds are far, as far as possible at the angle to each other of nearly 109.5 degrees. So here it describes specific uh, specific, uh, you know, the covalent bound, the angle, and and also the use, the structure of method is to describe as a tetrahedral shape because the four covalent bonds are pointing to the corner of the tetrahedral. You can see that the caption here further described using this uh, different means of representation to show you this is a go out of the page, whereas the dashed wedge go inside the page. So you can see that from this one. Same page from here to here, we can represent this. Now, in, in here, 
it doesn't sp it, it hasn't specified any information about uh, uh, which spatial dimension this atom is sitting, but through this it is specified which atom uh, which dimension they sit in and the arrangement and geometric shape. So this all mainly condensed in here. So we can see that from SD plus three to SD plus six using our translation device, we can see that how the complexity is being built throughout. So we can see that from year 10 to year 12, also year 12, but in different section, different uh, sections. You can see that from language then SH4, SH4 will be used directly in the next stage of knowledge building. SH4 and uh, and uh, this structure formula, and then it will be used directly uh, in the next stage and uh, further condensed to here from SD plus one, SD plus three, and SD plus six. We can use our translation device to see that how the complexity has been gradually being built there. So this is a payoff of uh, our translation device. Hope you. Uh, can see some, uh, uh, yeah, some value of it. And yeah, this is the bottom half, and we still have, let me take a look at time. I have half an hour. The top half, okay, so. Jigang, can I just uh, jump in for a second, just to give yeah, you yeah, a, yeah, yeah. a break yeah, for yeah. a moment? It's just, just to, yeah. if you can go back a, um, a slide. Another which way to, to talk about it is, um, um, which might be slightly, uh, would also perhaps help people understand is the is the increasing complexity of meanings that are that are mm. occurring. So um, there's condensation, but that often people forget that that involves a kind of increasing complexification, increasing number of meanings mm. um, that are being related to each other within the symbolism. Mm. So um, uh, yeah, so there's condensation, but also it's sort of it is adding more and more meanings to this particular mm. Mm. symbol. So it's becoming yeah. almost like a, 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 almost a more and more sophisticated node or sort of mini constellation, as it were, isn't it? Yeah, 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 you're right, yeah. Thank you. Uh, should I move on? Um, okay, um, still the top half, you see there we have this, uh, top half in the translate device. So within equation, uh, within equation we, we can also distinguish between symbolic and the uh, structural. So I use symbolic to refer to equation that I use molecule uh, formulas and or ionic formulas to represent the chemical species. For example, in this one, you can see that all these chemical species are represented by the uh, molecule formulas. And structure formulas uh, here, I re no, I use structure to uh, to refer equation. I use structure formulas to represent the chemical species, and they can indicate how the reactions happen. For example, uh, this is a, a structural equation. Through this, you can see that, uh, for, them, for example, this uh, chlorine chlorine bound first break, and then form a bound with this carbon. So it's forming here, can you yeah, forming here? So through this, we can see that how this uh, how, how this reaction happened within uh, at the molecule at the molecule level. And the reason why I uh, I believe this structural has more meaning than this uh, symbolic uh, is that for this one, it only shows uh, this state symbol, which is not shown in this kind of equation. But for this one, this one shows a lot of uh, meaning that don't show in this one. For example, the arrangement of uh, this, uh, uh, the atoms and uh, the covalent bounds. But most importantly, uh, it shows, it indicates how the reaction happens as significant meaning to this type of uh, equations. For example, it's kind of like a implicit, implicit event going there. So I believe uh, this structural, one has a strong, much stronger meaning than this symbolic one here. And within symbolic, uh, we can distinguish, uh, distinguish between this irreversible and reversible. What is uh, irreversible? I use irreversible to refer to equations that show one event. 
which means this is a forward reactions. But full reversible refers to the equation that show two events in that forward reactions and reverse reactions, just like introduced earlier. This is an equilibrium reaction that it starts from the left, but this ammonium liquid can also decompose into these two uh, substances. So it shows two events. Compared with this one, it has two events. So I put it above the Irreversible, irreversible in the SD strength. So uh, the last uh, part within structural, the same, it can be distinguished with the, uh, is paralleled uh, in the two levels. Irreversible and reversible can show forward reaction. And this show two events, you can forward, can show the reverse, the same. The same reasoning uh, like before. So this is uh, the top half, and again that we can see about the payoff. Building complexity, a reaction between sodium and water. So from let's take a look at this uh, this text. You can see from the language. We said the sodium metal dissolved in water, heat is produced, fizzing is caused by the production of hydrogen gas. If there is enough heat, the hydrogen gas catches fire above the sodium metal and with the image here, both of them to describe the macroscopic meaning of the ex uh, experiment phenomenon. Here, macroscopic means something is tangible here, tangible there. We can see that. So it's from the description of language and image. And we can also see that some microscopic meaning there, the ratio in which they react, the ratio in this chemical reaction, chemical equation means that this ratio, the re, this molecule react in units, and also this formulas, atoms and uh, molecules. So this is a microscopic meaning there, condensed. Uh, you can see that from this image, from the language and the image and the formulas, we can, is a, there's a process of condensation here, use these uh, uh, equations to represent all the meanings that uh, there's so using the translation device. This one is uh, labeled plus seven. And in year 11, uh, they're describing the same reaction, but it asks something more. It asks that uh, the presence of hydrogen oxide ions, so, you know, is so this ratio and the formulas are not no, are no longer introduced here, but it adds something more. Introduction of ions from language and the formulas. So it's condensed here. So from year 10 to year 11, is the meaning is being increased from SD seven, uh, plus seven to SD plus six. So we can uh, see so there's an increase in there. So here, uh, the previous part is focused on uh, the topics with the same, the same topic, which help, can help us uh, see the decrease of the complexity of meaning there, uh, very you know convincingly. But I still will I in acting this translative device to see the development semantic density across the schooling levels. So this is a very uh, sketchy graph that I get uh, from the from my analysis using the translation device. This points, this point here means the most complicated, most the highest semantic density in each year. So, for example, in year seven, it only uses mo molecular formulas. The most complex formulas it used is uh, is the molecular formulas uh, using our translation devices ST plus one. And in year eight, still the molecular formulas. There's a, there isn't much uh, complexity being building here. So CO2, for example, CO2 SD plus one. And in year nine, the the, uh, the start which starts to introduce uh, the um, C, uh, the ionic formulas using our trusted device SD uh, plus two. And in year ten, there's a spike there because uh, it start to introduce uh, the uh, uh, chemical reaction start to introduce chemical reaction um, the, using the chemical equations to, uh, to build the knowledge of, to show the chemical reaction is our transition SD plus seven. 
And year 11, you can see that from year 11, the complexities have been gradually built. For example, this is a ionic equation there. Equilibrium can a lot mean being built in here. And all the way up to year 12, the structural equations, reversible. So you can see that the knowledge is being built. Enacting this equation enables us to see the complexity is being built gradually through, throughout the schooling levels. So can I just jump in for a moment, Shigang? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to Please. say, it might be it might be worth just letting people uh, know uh, that the numbering system is simply a kind of heuristic. It's not a it's not a yeah. exact yeah. science. Yeah. It's a, it's just a yeah. it's just a way that you're able then to sh to kind of show uh, differences. There may actually be bigger jumps and smaller jumps between these level, you know, numbers that you've given, but they're just a way yeah, of being yeah. able to at least give some sense of the differences, aren't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. All these scales is according to my translation device. Uh, yeah, they may be not exactly that precisely uh, the, the change, the development of the SD strength, but it only, but it, it helps us to see a general mm. increase of the complexity across this. This is one levels. thing. For the future, yeah. um, which is that just for the future, in terms of uh, numbering and stuff, is that it might be worth. I remember Helen Giorgio putting a bigger gap in between the um, the first two levels. So instead of it being, you know, so instead of it being one, two, three, four, mm. five, six, and so on, there being gaps that are bigger because you're going between two types that may actually have a bigger jump. Uh, but that's for the future. Um, yeah, somebody yeah. asked, uh, I'm just going to, while we've stopped you for a second, um, yeah. uh, Lee Ruchniak um, asked uh, why reversible reactions of greater somatic density than irreversible ones. And uh, Han and Giorgio suggested that if you wrote them out or unpacked them, there'd be two reactions, the forward and the backward. Uh, is that um, what you meant by that? Why reversible are stronger yeah. somatic density than irreversible ones? Yeah, 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 yeah. Helen, uh, yeah, that's right. Because uh, in uh, reversible uh, equations that they show two, uh, I use two events actually, uh, two, two reactions it can forward from the left to right uh, is a forward reaction, but it can also show a, you know, reverse. It can from the product, it can, de de can for example, I used uh, the, ammonium example that it can decompose uh, to form uh, nitrogen gas and oxygen gas. So it can reverse, so two events there. But for irreversible, there's only one forward reaction. So that's how I distinguish this. Yeah, yeah Helen's right, yeah. Well, thank, thanks, Helen, for that. And also, Lee, for the question. I'll let you carry on. Uh, if anybody has any down. questions, they can just jump in. Oh. I wonder if I can jump in, Jiang. It, it strikes me that, uh, Russell Tyler here, um, it strikes me that there's not a lot of difference in, in terms of the look of the equation by just having it going backwards as well. I, I wonder whether the complexity really is about the kind of thinking that that opens up in terms of um, a balanced uh, equations or, or equilibrium, the sort of thinking that goes on behind there. Just as much or even more, it's the practice to which this is put rather than the actual look of the equation itself, do you think? Um, can you elaborate uh, the second half uh, uh, of, uh, of your points? Well, uh, the, when, yeah. when you look at the structure of the equation, just by putting a reverse arrow in doesn't do much unless you understand that that then opens up a, a, a thinking that is more complex in terms of uh, you know, what's actually happening at the molecular level. So it's about the practice to which this symbolism is put as much as anything. Um, you mean the, uh, the double, the reversible arrow? Yes, yes, the, uh, I, I mean that. Yeah. Yeah, the meaning uh, here, I'm, I'm, I'm comparing the uh, complexity of these equations that uh, depend, the, depend on the meaning they express. Uh, so. The adding of uh, this uh, equilibrium arrows, reaction arrows, uh, uh, because it shows a uh, shows a distinguish uh, 
uh, meaning there because uh, for irreversible, it shows only one kind of a forward reaction. But when you added a, a, a double uh, double end arrow, you can only it's kind of like the, it's a, it adds a you know kind of in chemistry in early years it only shows okay reactants and a product right this is for the irre irre irreversible reaction this is introduced in the early years but with the knowledge being built the, the knowledge being built and the, this uh, equivalent reaction is introduced but how to represent this forms of knowledge you use the arrow because the equilibrium uh, uh, reaction actually has a lot of meaning why uh, it is reversible so uh, so I maybe I need to uh, look into it further but my gut uh, for telling the complex difference is that one is very simple one is uh, represent one event a forward reaction the other is that uh, represent two events the forward reaction and uh, a reverse reaction, uh, reaction. So that's uh, my simple guts of uh, okay. telling the uh, difference of complexity. <laughs> Thank you. If it's, Thank you. I might try okay. as well, Jigang, um, just to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and try to respond as well, Russell, um, just in terms of all this. I think you know, you, very much your, your question is, is useful in terms of this, you know, um, the use these things are, are put toward. And one of the key things about the nature of the concepts in LCT is they're not tied to any particular um, thing that you want to look at. So, you know, you can take the textbook as the thing you're you know measuring the vari variation or you can take the you know what the students understand at any particular point or what the curriculum is trying to get to what Zhigang is doing here is looking at how this is built in the curriculum and the textbook and of course uh, a kind of separate but also really you know important study is how much can the students get out of this at any particular point and that obviously um, involves a lot of um, issues with the teaching and all that type of stuff in terms of how they will get out of it but um, I think you know the key thing here is Zhigang is building up from textbooks and presenting what the textbooks in some sense themselves are um, saying so I, I hope I just thought I might kind of jump in as well so sorry I'll get out now. Thank you Egan. Okay uh, okay uh, uh, yeah, the above uh, are inactive my translation device. Is, uh, I'm trying to answer uh, the question, one of the questions that I bring, that I brought out in uh, in the research question part, the role of chemical formulas, what the role they play. Uh, why is that? It can condense many from languages and the uh, images. And the other is that it enable many to be further condensed based on previous forms and efficiently, just like you showed the uh, search for blah, 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 it can be, it enable me to be further condensed. Without this kind of formism, I can't imagine how much description or actual work that need to be done by the image or language. So the uh, camera formulas are used. Uh, you can condense meaning based on one layer and one layer. So this makes uh, the meaning being built very efficiently. And another, Role is that it enables knowledge building across schooling levels through their fine grained distinction in complexity and the capacity to contest highly complex meanings. So you can see that there, in my translation device, there are 13 categories of uh, SD strength. So this is a help, really helps, uh, you know, helps uh, chems, uh, chemistry boost their knowledge uh, through a different uh, schooling level because chemistry is uh, very, you know, very complex and uh, involves a lot of different aspects. They need this kind of uh, fine-grained distinction in complexity to build their uh, knowledge. So these are three points that argue the role of chemical forms in building knowledge. What about context dependency? Uh, the present part are mainly about the co complexity and what about context dependency? Doing context dependency, my finding, uh, my study of semantic gravity is that it reveals little difference in semantic gravity, for they are all quite context in independent, which means, in other words, their meanings remain very stable across contexts. For example, these are different chemical formisms, what molecule, you can put that across different kinds of contexts. You always uh, refer to a, in, in, at the microscopic uh, microscopy level, 
water molecule in the macroscopic level, a water. Water, so it mean, it's very generic. It doesn't change across context. It's mean saying this is a uh, represents a reaction between hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. You put it in different uh, context, meaning remain the same. And also, this is a sterile structure, a sterile chemical uh, formula of a methane. You can say that it represents that kind of uh, uh, methane. You put it in different contexts, it's meaning remain very stable. But it is, uh, so how, 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 how does chemistry, uh, you know, to, you know, do, con do context dependency? So it needs to react uh, to react with uh, language, other semantic resources, language and uh, images. For example, two hydrogen atom bond with oxygen atom to form H2O. Can that meaning from language deformism? And also connect to concrete substance through image. So what is uh, H2O represent? What represent? It connect to this concrete substance through this image. And another example using this description very vigorous reaction occur with a piece of sodium acid to be curve 11 of description of this uh, experiment phenomena. The sodium moves into a random manner on the surface of uh, water producing spitting sound, hydrogen and water turns pink when the indicator phenomena. You see that this image directly presents that kind of uh, concrete reaction. So this chemical equation, so it connect to the more contextualized meaning through its relation with this, uh, you know, language and image. And also, still this one, even in the very, uh, very uh, in year 12, um, high level, uh, schooling level, you can also see this different, you know, Orange color of the bromine quickly disappear when they mix with the uh, alkene, and this uh, caption describes this reaction. So we also connect to the concrete phenomena through language and the image. So here I give this chemical formula do not do context dependency, but they connect with the concrete and contextual meaning through the relation with language and the images. So this is about context dependency. Uh, why chemistry use diverse formism? Uh, come back to my uh, the question, like why science use uh, chemical formism? This is an insight from chemistry. First, chemistry use formism are very efficient in condensing meaning. I have uh, you know uh, explained elaborated this in earlier. And the second point is that it enables knowledge building through the fine grained distinction in complex complexity and their capacity to condense highly complex meanings. And the last point is that in a multimodal sense, they show extreme complex in independence, enabling moving from more concrete and contextual meaning expressed in language and image to context independent chemistry knowledge. So this is how, how yeah, they need to work with the uh, language and uh, image. They show different, uh, you know, uh, capability of doing context dependency. So the abstract knowledge from language and meaning. So this is also uh, a part of the reason why chemistry use the uh, formisms. So three arguments to answer uh, the initial question I proposed in the beginning. So that's all. Thank you. Uh, just about one hour. Thank you. Finished here. Wow. <laughs> wow, Shigong, you, uh, you, you finished, you finished um, uh, before time, in fact. So that's amazing because um, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, when, you were, when you were telling us about what you uh, would cover, we were a bit concerned um, that you would take uh, uh, a whole hour just going through your translation of us. But you actually, um, have covered not only uh, most of that, but also uh, try to show at least how this can start to unpick the the, the way in which formalisms. Well, yeah. one of the ways in which formalisms are working inside uh, textbooks to try and help um, start to reveal how they the role they might play in in mm. building knowledge, um, at least in terms of the curriculum. Okay, so. Um, uh, 
as uh, we've got loads of time now for um, for any questions or whatever. If people just want to unmute themselves, or if you don't if you don't want to do that, or your connection's terrible, then you can always um, ask the question in chat, and either myself or Mauricio can ask the question mm. to to Gang. Um, anybody got any questions or comments or um... ah, Max? Yeah. I have Hello, a couple. Mags. Hello. Hello, Mags. Um, hey, hey, Margaret. Hey. <laughs> it's great to see you here. <laughs> Good to be here. Um, just a couple of things, uh, Zhigang. Most importantly, I think just to be careful in terms of your 3D representation. Uh -huh. You're showing the... So I totally agree in terms of the, the ordering of those things. I think that that is correct. So the mm -hmm. 2D to the 3D representation, you're 100% in terms of your interpretation there. Mm -hmm. But the, the diagram that you're using to make that argument is a diagram that is used in, in the VSCPR section of the textbook, okay? Yeah. That, that diagram only gets used in that section. So the, the 3D representation that doesn't have the tetrahedron or the bond angle is actually the one that's more commonly used and implies all of the information of the VSCPR diagram. So I think you just need to change the picture, so the picture that you used right in the beginning to make the, the, the distinction. Um, Let me show you the, Okay. Um, let me... Uh, this one, right? Uh, this one? Yeah. Yeah. So, so on... Mm. Okay, it's just changed. Uh, oh, hang on. I've just, uh, yeah, so this diagram here, so the diagram, the top diagram, the mm, diagram yeah. that doesn't have the red border or the bond angle is a better diagram to use here because yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it implies all of that information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is only, uh, this dash, the uh, line is only to draw like a geometry there. That's, uh, yeah. Yeah, so what I'm saying is for, for the structural representation would not normally have that red triangle. It implies the red triangle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me show. Yeah, let me show you. This one is. Uh, uh, yeah, that this one. Yeah, yeah, this one. Does know the red lines. Yeah, I agree with you. That that's from yeah, my so, textbook. So just. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but but when you when you put, I think when you're making this argument, be careful which diagram you choose. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it because it does matter. <laughs> yeah, I can use this one. Yeah. But I just uh, cropping the diagram from a textbook uh, from the year twelve textbook. Yeah. I can use this one. This one's better. I would say even the, even to remove the bond angle there. So on slide fourteen, 14. you've got one four. Fourteen. One slide one four. Uh, sorry. Okay. Which one? Yeah. This one. Okay, so, so yeah. uh, okay, sorry, Same. no, you've still got the bond angle there. It would still be better to have one without the bond angle, but that's okay. Yeah, I, I, I choose this one because uh, a bond angle is kind of like a use a quantitative measure to, you know, to show, because uh, this all angles are the same to show specifically uh, what the bond, bond angle is, because this is kind of a sure. meaning there, yeah. All I'm saying is that for, for, the, for the chemist, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the version without the bond angle, the bond angle is implied by the diagram. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's implied, not labeled, right? Yeah. So, so which but, gives but the density to that diagram. But for a student, uh, for a student, for a novel student, they, they need kind of like uh, introduce the angle between there, but they, they can use this diagram later without this uh, labeling of the angle, right? But at a certain stage, they still need to label it with this, uh, with this. They can, they can use without this in later, and when they encounter this kind of, uh, without this one, they know the angle, but in a certain stage, they still need to use this to show that the bond angle how yeah i agree with you but there's some certain stages they use this to label it to show 
a bond angle to show a tetrahedral shape there. Sure, I'm. I'm just. Thank you. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I agree the, with you. The, the, the yeah, second I, thing that I that I want to say, I understand why you're doing it, but if you just yeah. go to slide fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. This one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so here you're talking about that in that the second equation that we're talking about as as a molecular equation. This one. Um, yeah, the reaction of sodium and water to give sodium hydroxide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The aqueous there implies the presence of ions. It isn't a molecular equation. So the hmm. state symbol changes the meaning. If the state symbols weren't there, you could call this a this, You could use the um, thing that you the molecular equation, but the state symbol mm -hmm. implies the presence of ions. Yeah, I, I understand this is uh, on any compounds and the uh, yeah they dissolved in the in equilibrium and the show as a free ion. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. Um, so you I'm, ju I'm just saying it's yeah. it's slightly it's slightly tricky because they've introduced the state symbols very early on before the students really understand what the state symbols mean. So mm. at this point in grade, mm. it's in year yeah, eight, yes. which I think this comes from, mm. they don't yet understand what those state yeah. symbols mean. Yeah, yeah, they don't yet understand, just use them at that level, doesn't, yeah. Here, because uh, uh, in some chemistry text textbook, uh, for example, this one, they use they introduce that uh, uh, molecule formulas in which formulas or compounds are shown as molecules or whole units. They just use them as whole units, and in later stages, so whole they, units is fine. Whole units, yeah, is fine. whole units it's is fine. Molecules is a problem. Later, yeah, yeah, but they label it. Uh, my, the, my my text the textbook I use the label with uh, molecule equations. In later, but in later stage, they specify this is cation, right, and ionic equation. Yeah, but in any way, only they put them together and label them molecular equation. That's probably an issue about community knowledge building in textbooks. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Okay. Thank I you. Think Can I okay. just jump it's in just... for a second? Thank you. Can I just jump in for a second, just um, just to say, because uh, uh, I just want to let uh, Nicholas have a have an opportunity to ask something, because he asked, "Can I ask a question?" So can I just jump in and let say, Nicholas, can you ask a question? Yes, um, I was expecting actually a no, uh, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, as a complete LCT novice, um, I'm thinking about the representation, the change in representation from methane as a chemical formula to the uh, two-dimensional and three-dimensional representations. And I would argue in a way that the straight chemical representation hides a lot more complexity than the three-dimensional one, in which case the density of the um, chemical formula CH4 is actually in a way higher than once you've unpacked it to the um, um, three-dimensional model. Uh, I don't know if I'm talking nonsense uh, or I've got my sort of uh, ducks not in a row. Um, you mean CH4? Let me show, let me, uh, uh, let's move on uh, to my knowledge building part directly. Uh, you mean this one has higher cement density than this one? Am I right? Yes. Uh no, sorry. Jigan, I was going to ask you the same question. Yeah, yeah, please. Um, uh, to me, it seems like some of the representations, like the molecule, molecular formulas, look more complex to me than the other ones. So you think this one looks more complex yes. to you than this one? Uh, maybe not that one, but like the second, second one. Second yeah, one, this one? Definitely, um, to me, that looks very simple, whereas the first one, CH4, there looks very complex. Uh, the way Can I. I uh, why? Uh, because uh, 
For this one, uh, molecular formulas is only tells you uh, the composition of atoms here. One common atom of four hydrogen atoms, the mm. composition of atoms mm. within the, the mo molecules. But this one, you know, it shows you the composition there. Mm. It shows what 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 is what has been shown in this uh, molecular formulas. But additionally, it shows covalent bonds, a pair of uh, sharp electrons. This is uh, additional meaning here, and also how these many are arranged, uh, how these uh, atoms are arranged. So there are kind of two types of actual meaning, additional meaning here. So that's why I argue this one has the uh, strongest main density than this one. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. Thank you. C can I jump in here and say, I think you yes, better remember that this is being viewed from the novice building knowledge. So uh, I look at CH4 and what's implied within it is the three-dimensional structure where the novice student is, is simply still trying to figure out that there are four hydrogens attached to a single carbon. So, so you've got to view it through the lens of the novice, not through the lens of the expert. I think what yeah, Mike said is a, is a brilliant point, and this, is, this yeah. often comes up in, um, in LCT and actually in SFL as well, which is, um, um, is that, oh hell, hang on, my Bluetooth is just disconnected. Can you still hear me, Shigang? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Um, which is um, um, often we look at something and we see all the sort of implied knowledge from the viewpoint of the expert, um, whereas it can be sometimes difficult from that end to see how much knowledge has been condensed or how many ideas or uh, have been related in a symbol or an idea or concept or whatever it is at that moment in time. And in your case, it's at that level in the textbook in year seven or eight or nine or 10, rather than the full amount that will appear eventually. Mm. Yeah. So I think that's what Max was saying, I think. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree, I agree, yeah. Yeah, otherwise everything, every concept, every, every concept would be seen only from the end point, which would be all super condensed. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. If you see from the lens of experts, uh, okay, I see a very simple uh, representation. I can still read a lot of meaning from there. That's an, but for a novice, doesn't, for a novice student, he can't read that much meaning from that form, uh, for example, from these formulas here. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Any more questions? Oh, people yeah, are saying I... things on the chat, by the way. Can I leap in again in terms the of the context people... dependence towards the okay, end? Welcome. Yeah, yeah, please. Um, I didn't being really... here. Yeah, I think maybe I, mean, maybe I need to have a conversation with you about that because I'm not really understanding. So for me, a particular chemical equation uh, yeah. is a specific context. So I think I, I, it's, I understand what you're trying to do here, but I think you need to be very careful about how you're defining context. I got a little bit lost in terms of how you were trying to do that. So I'm just going to say, just, just be careful about how mm. you how you're defining context here. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'm happy to have a conversation with you offline about this because I think there's maybe I'm not understanding what you're trying to do here. I love to. That's a that's a. I write you a mail to, for the on some further issues. It's nice to have you here today, Max. Uh, it's been a long time since last time we chat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So people are focused on writing in the dialogue. Any more comments or questions? Yeah, I'll, um, uh, that Lee's asked, did you, did the textbooks you looked that use Lewis dot diagrams to look at formula equations beyond the sections on chemical bonding? 
I have no idea what that means, but that's what these are. Did a text for you look to use? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just reading it out. Yeah, thanks for Lee. Mm, that's a good question. Yeah, the textbook you do use Lewis dot diagram, but but I I categorize that part. I didn't include. I haven't included that in my formalisms because I think uh, um, there's two reasons. One is that my PhD first uh, first part is about description of these uh, formalisms. Um, these diagrams are a little bit too imagic, so I didn't include them in formalisms. That is one reason. Another reason is. Uh, uh, how should I? It seems to me that it's a lot that kind of like a form is, is more in magic. That's the primary reason that I didn't include uh, Lewis diagram in my in, in my in my in my in my work here. Maybe Yagen, yeah, Yagen, are you there? Can you? Uh, we have talked about this uh, before. Can you make some comment? Sure. I guess I, I don't know uh, enough about the Lewis di diagram in, uh, in particular, but we've talked a lot about the fact that there is enormous variation and um, just simply that um, you know you can only do so much. Um, and so there's always another thing to bring in and there's always another one and you could just keep going and keep going and bring in another one. And um, at some point when you're dealing with stuff like this, um, you just need to kind of define the sets you're mm -hmm. going to look at. Um, so I think that could be a, a good thing for someone else who wants to follow this up and take a look at those ones because there's always much more. Yeah, yeah. Can I leap in quickly and just say the other thing is that they're not actually, they're used to teach bonding, but don't really get used beyond that. So once you understand bonding, Lewis diagrams get left behind. Yeah, yeah. They the, uh, the, the share the pair of electrons. In other words, they just use the single line to represent that. Yeah. In early stages, they use uh, Lewis diagram to show the bonding, the shared pair of elect electrons. Yeah, I didn't include that. Hmm. I'll look into whether I should do some changes and later, but that's a good question. That's a good question. Thank you. Charles? Yeah, Hi. Mauricio. Yeah. Hi. Wait, wait, wait. Give me one second. While Mauricio sorts out his uh, terrible echo, um, just a quick uh, note from Mauricio, me, uh, I'm muting you. Um, uh, from Diane, just Hi. to say, um, make sure that you're clear, Jigang, when you're talking, okay. no that you're anymore. doing an analysis of the semantic density of the knowledge that's being represented in the textbook, rather than mm -hmm. an analysis of how a student learner may be developing their own appreciation of the complexity of the knowledge. So um, I know in order to explain something in an answer, you talked about not from the novice's perspective. Um, um, but um, that's certainly not what you're going to be looking at because that would be a whole different kettle of fish would be. That'd be a, a next stage, wouldn't it? The, a study of how different students might um, be engaging and learning or not. It's more of a, a rep uh, analysis of how the, the re recontextualizing field or the curriculum or the textbook, whatever you want to call it, is laying this out um, uh, as you go. So we'll have to figure a way of being able to say what you were saying in terms of like not from the novice's perspective without uh, drifting into sounding like it's an analysis or study of um, what students are learning, if you know what I mean. We just have to write, find the right form of words, that's all. Shigang? Have we lost your gang, Paz, uh, Mauricio? Um, he seems to be transmitting from what I can tell. Uh, uh, so, so I don't know. Everything but, seems to be 
Xi Gang seems to be frozen. Yeah. Well, what I what I was gonna say, uh, and and I think I'll tell him later, is that um, what helped me to understand. Yeah, I think he dropped out. Uh, what helped me understand uh, was that he's uh, not to lose focus in the his object of study, which is the school book uh, text knowledge building, and uh, that that that's the focus of what is being represented. That. His focus is not to analyze how semantic density is um, condensed in chemistry, as it were, or as an abstract uh, discipline, but rather how um, there is a representation, uh, a linear representation, a sequential representation, and he's trying to give us a language to understand how that sequential uh, knowledge is being constructed and then used to, to, to teach, uh, which is why, uh, obviously, I think uh, Max can look at CH4 and she sees this you know, huge matrix of things going on behind. But for me, uh, as a novice uh, learner, he's just, uh, he or she is just going to look at, uh, just, those are just letters. And then you see the sequential stages that, you know, the SD plus one, the plus three, the plus six, and so on which leads you eventually to cultivate you as a knower that knows that actually CH4 within the context of chemistry or whatever uh, means all those things. But that not, that's not what uh, uh, Charles is doing. That, that's what I understood from his presentation. Rather, he's letting us know how this first part is being done in the text. And, and I think that we do need to be aware that uh, Charles, obviously you can, you can correct me, but for what I understood from your presentation is that you're looking specifically at the text and how that knowledge is represented uh, in that specific sequential moment. Um, thanks, thanks, Mauricio. Um, I'm sorry my network was, uh, was, was bad a moment ago and uh, I'm, I was offline. I hear the second half of your, of your, of your of your words here, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, I'm trying to analyze uh, how this uh, translation device of uh, the complexity of uh, forms and can help us uh, to see when the knowledge is being community built, uh, how the uh, complexity develops uh, through the schooling levels. Uh, yeah, just like a sequence there. Uh, what was the question that I was, uh, I was offline a moment ago? But thanks for Mauricio for your help uh, answering uh, questions. Oh, thank you. Uh, I, I thought it was a very interesting presentation and I think it's a huge like, scaffold to analyze how you know, information is being represented. Like to me, it makes sense, um, even for my own investigation, like my research on how a constitution was you know, discussed and it makes me, you know, the difference between the actual things that were said versus like the representations. I don't know, this, this, I think it's like a symbolic difference. Like one, is, one thing is how you talk about something and a very different thing is how that something actually, you know, condense or has condensed a lot of meaning. You know, that difference, I can see that you have analyzed that and it's very useful, you know, as a thinking tool to me. I have a question, uh, which is from Diane, who doesn't have a microphone, so she's asked me to relate, which is, um, she was suggesting that the textbooks may be potentially um, confused in inverted commas in that they um, don't actually present a linear perspective. It'd be useful to use the translation device to, to see what kind of assumptions the textbooks are, are uh, making as they go along, um, because, um, teachers are using textbooks that sort of are flawed and I think she means sort of jump around or assume the wrong things. Cumulative learning may be disabled. I think that is a really interesting um, potential use of the tools that you're developing. Um, I think that's going to be beyond um, your, uh, your thesis because you're doing SFL and LCT and creating new concepts to get at images and formalisms which you know which uh, we haven't done enough of. So um, but I think that would be definitely a uh, a really interesting potential use of the uh, translation device in the future and certainly something to to make a note of so that you could um, 
talk about the value of something like this translation device beyond the specific focus of your study. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I just, uh, yeah, I think the answer to points is very interesting. The area can be used to, to analyze some, uh, you know, if teachers use full textbook and community learning will be disabled. Yeah, very interesting uh, point there. Thank you. Uh, Do we have any more um, uh, uh, questions or comments or, um, I mean, I'm just so happy that so many people have um, uh, uh, are joining in these uh, round tables. It's, um, it was a bit of an experiment to go um, online and, um, uh, and I'm so pleased that so many people around the world are joining in, uh, in what is a really fantastic and very friendly and engaged community. Um, anyone? Got any uh, anything else for Shigang before um, he uh, takes the weekend off or whatever? Uh, I'm not sure who X Y Z is actually because uh, X Y Z is not very uh, revealing as to a name. But I'll um, I think the question that X Y Z has asked about translation devices on chat is such a big question um, to do with translation devices. I would just refer them to chapter two of the book knowledge building or they can always email me and ask me that question mm. and i will refer them to that chapter and potentially send them a copy of that chapter because that uh, how develop how we develop translation devices is a big question um so uh, mm. uh I, i'm not going to go into trying to ask shigang that because that is a big part of how lct works as a um as a framework but happy to if you send me xyz whoever you are if you send me an email, um, I, I'd be happy to send you something that explains that. Mm. So lots of people saying um, uh, 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 thanks for the talk and so on, Shikang. Um, I mean, really, thank you very much. This is work in progress, as I said earlier on in chat. Um, and it's only you one part of what he's doing. Final question. Ah, yeah, you Jump in. Uh, yes. So my, my jump in, and sorry to put you on the floor on here, uh, Jim, but Jim sent me an email asking how to ask a question. <laughs> um, his, uh, his question. Um, is he still here? Yes, Jim, is Jim you just, still here? You, ju you just click unmute, but I'm not going to now ask it for you yourself. Uh, is he still here, un Jim? Unmute yourself. So Jim is yeah. uh, Jim is Jim's, here. Jim's not here. I can't see him now. He must have oh, okay. uh, so vanished. Oh, well. Len's here. Hey, Len. <laughs> um. So he, Jim's question, although he's gone, was um. Uh, he's relating it to mathematics as well and he's asking can these be used in sequence to derive new meaning and in one sense uh, build brand new meaning themselves or are they kind of so similar to say a derivation in mathematics where you'd have you know a series of maths and you get to some new relations or do the chemical formulas and equations not have these type of text types that you know, start somewhere and end with brand new relations through a series of internal modifications. That's, that's his question. <laughs> you know, it's a bit uh, crumpy there, just a... Uh, oh, okay. I, I can ask you, can you? separately if, you, if it didn't come through. Uh, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I think Jim's oh, question must be very interesting. Uh, I didn't, did uh, did not hear that question? I don't know why my network is now is not because my network uh, when it uh, comes to alignment is not stable, and uh, Jagan's uh, talking. I can't catch much uh, most part of it, but part of it can. Okay, okay Jagan, think... email me that question. Uh, we have a I discussion. Think... I think what uh, the technology is now telling us that, so that question um, is, uh, is um, uh, something that uh, Jägen will contact you with and um, we'll get back to Jim and maybe share it on the forum as well. So I think the technology is now sort of telling us that it's time for us to draw it to a close. Uh, and thank you, Zhigang, for, um, for presenting and lots of people saying thank you and you've done a great job there. Uh, work in progress that you'll be developing um, through to finishing and concluding your PhD, hopefully uh, later this year. 
and um, uh, and I'll just remind everybody. Thank you, everybody else, for coming as well, and also to remind you that um, we're doing this all again in a couple of weeks' time with Saul Richardson looking at uh, uh, music and the horrors of constructivism, basically. Uh, so thank you again, Zhu Gang. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I think Paz will keep a hold of the chat, so she'll be able to let you have access to the chat so you can have a look and see what people have written. And everybody can always ask a question online. It's been great how people have been engaging in the email forum after uh, these roundtables. So please do keep that up because it connects people, it keeps them engaged. And, uh, and I think everybody needs some communication at the moment, to be honest. So keep asking questions on the email forum or, or, or uh, um, uh, get, get in touch with your gang directly. So that's fine. Um, and I hope to see all of you in two weeks time. So thanks you gang and thank you everybody else for coming. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you for uh, See you. Attending. See ya.